In the academic setting, so in the context of writing your dissertation or your thesis, ethics have become somewhat uh, of an annoying and complex thing that you simply are uh, expected and required to discuss in your study, in your somewhere in your thesis. Uh, however, it's important to remember that in practice, ethics are, are much more than this, and they are in fact something very important. So essentially, ethics are uh, principles of conduct about was, what is right and what is wrong. Uh, so the conduct of your study Ethics are about your respect for, uh, for others, for people, uh, in this context that we're discussing, respect, uh, your respect for your participants, really. So nowadays, everybody is extremely sensitive and cautious about uh, ethics and research. And this, uh, at least to some extent, uh, results from uh, several studies in the past in which ethics were not among the main priorities, to say the least. One of the best examples of a study that would not pass uh, today's requirements when it comes to uh, ethical considerations is Milgram's uh, study of the use of authority, in which the participants believed that they were giving other people increasingly strong electric shock. Uh, the other people were actually actors, however our participants didn't know that. So in short, they kept being asked to increase the strength of the electric shock. And if they hesitated, they were also being encouraged uh, by statements such as come on, you can do this, you should do this, you must do this, uh, you have to do it if you want to remain in this study. There were several problems with this study, but the main ones were of course related uh, to the ethics of the study. Because deception was used, the participants didn't know that the other people were actually actors, uh, and also because uh, several participants were, as you can probably imagine, left uh, distressed after this study, in the short run and in the long run. And another study that you may have heard about, or maybe even you watched a movie about it, was Stanford Prison Experiment. There are some similarities between these studies. So uh, the point, uh, the aim of this study was to check how easily people conform to certain social norms that they are expected to to conform to, or certain roles they are expected to play. So in this particular study, the roles were prisoners and prison guards. 24 people were selected for this study and they were assigned uh, these different roles. So the problems with ethics in this study started very early, especially for the prisoners, who were treated like criminals. They were taken from home without any warning, they were blindfolded, they were uh, brought to the police station, they were stripped naked and put to cells. What is the most concerning thing about this study is that within hours of beginning the experiment, uh, certain guards started to abuse the prisoners. So, and this harassment, uh, physical, uh, verbal and psychological abuse went on throughout the whole experiment. An increasing number of prisoners started to suffer from psychological conditions, however they were told that they cannot withdraw from this experiment now. There was even a small rebellion at some point among the prisoners, who locked themselves in their cells and, and put up their beds against the doors, and uh, some of them were also plotting to escape the prison. Nowadays, it is often uh, being pointed out that the study was flawed on so many levels, in so many aspects, including the fact that their behavior uh, of both the prisoners and the guards uh, cannot be argued to have been influenced by the same factors that it would normally be outside of the experiment, because they knew they were uh, basically acting in this study. However, of course, uh, the most serious problems were related to ethics. The main problem was the lack of consent form. So the participants basically didn't know what they were signing up for. They didn't know what to expect. And then the fact that they were told that they cannot withdraw from the study, just imagine how they must have felt. So although these examples are in fact uh, rather hardcore, and fortunately these things don't happen in research nowadays, they do uh, present several important considerations that we need to make when planning our study. So as I said before, we generally want to be fair to our participants. We of course don't want to cause them any discomfort or stress. We want to inform them about the study, we want to give them the right to withdraw if at any point they do in fact uh, feel embarrassed or distressed in any way. And of course we can't and we don't want to cause any physical or uh, mental or psychological harm to our participants. So considering that there are so many ways in which our participants may 
uh, possibly suffer one of these things because we never know every person is different uh, how do we ensure that our study in fact is ethical just before i continue i hope that you're enjoying this content and you're learning something new if you do please like the video to help others find it on youtube also this video is an extract from my self-study course on how to develop and conduct your first research study in that course i focus on qualitative research and it's a course for beginners so i focus on everything every aspect of planning and conducting and then describing your research study so i talk about uh, the research aims and ideas and research questions so something that we usually start with I explain the differences between these terms and the relationships between them as well as the relationship between the research question and the research design and research methods then i also discuss different research methodologies such as phenomenology or case study or grounded theory explain their importance and explain how they differ from research methods which are our different data collection methods, which I also cover in this course. There is also a module on qualitative data analysis in which I discuss different traditional approaches to data analysis and then explain uh, some similarities and differences between them. Then I walk you through uh, the actual practical part of qualitative data analysis. I also talk about different uh, approaches such as inductive and deductive and abductive approaches and then cover the issue of writing about our research study. So I cover a couple of sections such as limitations or conclusions or the results uh, sections or chapters. I also focus on the most confusing things about research such as uh, the importance of research paradigms and then our ontological and epistemological beliefs and how they relate to our actual study and our research questions. So there is a whole range of things that I cover in this course. I really tried hard to cover most uh, or all of the important considerations and things in research. So I do think it's a very, very valuable course. So if you're new to research, uh, you may consider watching the course trailer and reading more about the curriculum of that course and the link provided below this video and then if you have any more questions whether this course is suitable to you feel free to ask me these questions in the comments firstly nowadays each university has uh, their own ethical guidelines that need to be followed so if you are based at a university you need to find out what these guidelines are and follow these guidelines and then there is a process in which you gain approval for your study ethical approval so usually you need to ask your university for uh, the ethical approval form and then basically that's a form that keeps uh, that asks you uh, a range of questions about your study especially focusing on whether there is in fact risk of any kind of uh, any kind of harm to your participants and once you clarify all these points and gain this ethical approval your study is good to go. And then once your study got a green light from the university, another thing that you have to prepare is something called an informed uh, consent form. This is something that was missing from the examples of the past studies that I just provided. The informed consent form is a form that specifies a number of things about your study. You give it to your participants prior to recruiting them or when recruiting them, prior to signing up for a study, each participant will read this informed consent form uh, in order to understand more about the study and the role of the participant and, and your role as a researcher. There are plenty of different templates for what you can include in this informed consent form. So uh, it's, it's quite easy to find such templates, but uh, as a rule, you generally want to introduce yourself and explain who you are, uh, what university you're from and, and what you're doing, so what this study is. So basically a very short and brief information uh, about this study and maybe the aims of this study. You may include uh, some potential contributions and implications of this study. I feel like it's uh, always encouraging to the participant to hear about potential contribution just because they may feel like they're taking part in something important. Then you want to explain uh, the procedures of the study, including how you will be gathering the data, which uh, of course includes their role. So what do you want from them in the study? What do you want them to do and whether you will interview them and how many times and how long this will last? You don't want to go into uh, too much detail, just anything that's relevant uh, to your participants. Just imagine what you would want to know if I asked you today, 
about being becoming a participant in a study that you know nothing about. Like I said, the whole point is for them to be informed. That's something that was missing from these past studies. You want them to know exactly what to expect and what the study is about. Of course, you want to talk about any potential risks. So if there are any, you definitely uh, have to explain this to your participants. Then you, uh, you want to explain that they have the right to withdraw from the study at any point without giving you the reason. So again, you don't want them to feel embarrassed or awkward. You just want them to have this right. They, they do have to have this right to withdraw without giving you any reason at any point of the study. So that's one of the most important rights that you need to grant your participants. And then explain the issues of confidentiality and anonymity, uh, depending which ones uh, apply to your study. So generally the difference between the two is that confidentiality means that you will know their, uh, their identity, but you will uh, make effort into making sure nobody else knows. So for example, they will be assigned uh, certain nicknames when you're talking about the findings of your study. And anonymity is a slightly different thing because uh, in this case you don't even know their identity. So if you're distributing this form to many people and then they are signing up and you're not asking them to provide the real name so you won't even know the real identity. So it depends wh what your study is about, what kind of study you're doing, you may, uh, you may have one or the other in your study. And then uh, finally you also want to explain what happens to the data because they will be uh, talking to you, possibly audio or video recorded. Again, this is something that may help uh, somebody identify the real identity and this is something you don't want to happen. So you have to explain what will happen to the data. Usually the expectation is that it will be, uh, as I said, the, the names and any information that may help identify them will be changed, will be anonymized, and then the data itself will only be kept for a certain a period of time. Usually by the time you finish your study or publish your study or, or send it uh, somewhere or have uh, received your final grade. So basically when you're done with your study usually you're expected to delete and destroy all the files and by that time you're expected to uh, keep it in a protected ideally password protected folder. So basically everything you need to do everything you can in order to make sure nothing leaks to the uh, to the public, not none of the private information. So that's, and that's what you need to explain to your participants in that uh, informed consent form. This way you're making sure that your study is ethical, your participants are very well informed. Uh, you are in fact making efforts to uh, to protect them. So like I said at the beginning, it's not just about being approved by the university, but actually about your honest desire and effort to make sure that your participants are completely safe if they decide to participate in your study. And this whole procedure, all your efforts to ensure that your study is, is ethical or your ethical approval uh, procedures as well as the informed consent, consent forms are usually to be described in the methodology chapter or section.